Uh, someone has written in and asked what watch to wear uh, in the grave, which makes me think of Emily Dickinson's wonderful couplet, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. And he did not ask if I was wearing a watch or if I read Hodinkee. Hi everybody, I'm Jack Forster and you're watching Hey Hodinkee, where you ask questions and we answer. And today, one of you is asking about the only real question there is. Is it okay for me to be buried with my watch? It's not okay. What the hell's wrong with you? Hey Hodinkee, I dropped my watch. It's still running and looks okay, but I'm wondering about hidden damage. How can I tell if the movement is messed up? Generally speaking, if you drop a watch and there's some damage, you're gonna know about it uh, pretty quickly, uh, certainly if it's anything catastrophic. Now, one of the things that can happen to a dropped watch that might not show up immediately is uh, it might start running slightly fast or slightly slow. And the reason for this is that a lot of watches use movements with a device in it called a regulator that can be used to sort of fine tune how fast or how slow uh, a watch runs when it's at the watchmaker or even at the factory before it's sent out to the first customer. The thing about these regulators is that a lot of them are friction fit on the movement and uh, it's a pretty tight friction fit. Regular movement's not gonna jar it loose, but something like dropping it or something that jars your arm really sharply can actually jog the regulator out of position and uh, you might not notice it at first, but uh, if your watch is suddenly running several minutes a day faster or even 20 to 30 seconds a day faster than it used to, it might be because uh, you need to take the watch in and, and have it regulated by a watchmaker. Other than that, problems uh, like uh, a balance out of place, a balance spring you know, being twisted out of position, these are things that are gonna stop the watch outright. And as a rule, you're gonna know immediately if there's any really serious damage done to the movement that will require you to take it into a watchmaker. Hey, Hodinky, a little morbid, but here goes. When the clock of life stops ticking, what are your opinions on being buried in a watch? Are there any cultural traditions around it? Will you be buried in a watch? And if so, which one? Am I planning on being buried in a watch? What do I think? I this is a really interesting question. I mean, um, you know, the problem with uh, wanting to be buried in a watch, of course, is that you're not going to be around to appreciate the fact that you're wearing it. I mean, it's nice to sort of think of yourself being, uh, you know, kind of sent off to the netherworld, whatever your perception of the netherworld is, with something that you valued very much in life. But like, I feel like it's a very slippery slope. You know, I mean, you start out with wanting to have your body preserved with the thought that it's going to last a while even after you are no longer its tenant. And then you start to think about what watch will I wear? What suit am I gonna have on? What dress am I gonna wear when I'm dead and nobody can see me? And then like, you know, it just goes downhill rapidly from there. And before you know it, you're being buried with like your favorite horse and you're like, you know, three favorite concubines and uh, you know, your favorite cook and the person who designed your mausoleum. And um, you know, I think it's really, really useful to sort of reflect on the fact that uh, your watch is not going to do you any good six feet under attached to your formaldehyde engorged wrist. I mean, my personal you know, preference is uh, to leave watches out in the world where they're going to be able to bring people some happiness, where they'll be able to bring uh, a friend of yours who survives you happiness, a family member who survives you happiness. Being buried with a watch is a beautiful thing symbolically. Gunter Blumlein, who I revere as much as anybody in the watch industry, was buried with a Langenzona on his wrist. So, I mean, there's certainly a precedent for it, but in general, I think that it's a, a little bit of a bad look. It kind of says you can't let go when it's time to let go. Hey, Hodinky. I love independent watchmakers, but I only buy from the big brands because I'm worried I'll never be able to get my watch serviced if the indie goes out of business. Is this a legit concern? Yeah, it's a concern. It depends on the independent watchmaker and uh, the kind of independent watchmaking that they're doing. Anything that involves components made out of exotic materials, like silicon, for example, is probably going to be a little bit more difficult to repair over the long term. But, you know, if it was made once, it can be made again. If you're talking about an independent watchmaker who uses base calibers from manufacturers like, uh, you know, the Swatch Group uh, from Girard Perigo, uh, you're talking about at least the basic components are going to be relatively easy to replace in the timekeeping train. So while it's a concern, I don't think it's necessarily any more of a concern for independence, speaking of them across the board at least, uh, than it is for, you know, sort of watchmaking as a whole. Hi everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Outro. <laughs> Outro. Outro. It's the end. It's the end. 
Uh, by the way, I'm not planning on being buried in a watch. I, I think um, the last time I talked to my wife about it, I told her to just uh, prop me up uh, by the trash cans out behind our building naked with my hat on.